So have you ever wondered what's the easiest way to play custom animations on a Roblox character? And this formula is pretty simple and works on basically any type of a character, whether it's a skin mesh, Roblox's rig, or just overall a custom avatar. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. And just for a few notes before I start this video, I'm gonna be using a custom avatar from my previous video about custom characters, but like I said, the method that I'm gonna be explaining later is going to work even if this was a Roblox's rig. And I am also using a different interface, and that's because I have a beta feature called the Next Gen Studio Preview Enabled. I've also made a video on it and it's going to be down in the description. But anyway, so we are firstly just going to need an animation. I already have a few of them on this avatar, but I'm going to make a new one because I want this avatar to be an NPC. I also forgot to remove my UGC item from here, but well, it's a free ad now. But anyway, let's just get into the animating. So we just have our guy right here and now I need to go into the avatar tab and enable the animation editor and then just press on the avatar and I'm just going to name this animation cut idle and then press on create and the idle animation that we can give this avatar could be basically anything but since this is a cut I'm just going to do like a stretch animation for example so first I just want to add all of the body parts and then while being on the zero mark I need to do a right click and then add a keyframe here option so this is just going to save the starting position of the avatar in the current animation. And since this is going to be an idle animation, I'm going to change the length of it to like 3 seconds. And then do the same at the end. And also this animation needs to be looping, so I need to enable the toggle looping animation option. And now nothing is really going to happen because we need to add different keyframes of the position on the timeline of this avatar's bones. Normally if this was a Roblox rig, you wouldn't have these bones, you would just have normal base parts. But I'm just going to go onto a position of like 20 frames and basically just start animating. So I kind of just need to stretch out both of these legs and then rotate the whole avatar through the root bone. So it's going to go like this, but I also need to adjust these back legs a little bit. So this is a good start. Then around the middle I basically just want to repeat this, but make it have a little bit of a stronger effect. And then let's say I wanted to keep this guy in this position, I would simply just select these keyframes, then just copy the selected with just Ctrl and C, and just paste them sometime later. So now the stretch animation is basically just going to look like this. And then I can animate different stuff like the head for example or the tail. And then I can accidentally just undock the animation window because Roblox's docking system is just really great. And I am just going to do a little bit more in basically this segment right here because it just looks kind of plain when the cat is basically just staying in this position not doing anything. So I can just have it go like this. And now I'm thinking that I made it a little bit angry, but anyways, we basically just have an animation ready, but there is one more thing that we need to do, and it's to set the priority of the animation by going into these three dots, and then under the set animation priority, we want to change it to idle. And then after that, what we need to do is again go to these three dots, and then just publish the animation to Roblox. So I'm going to name this one cut idle testing and just press on save. And from here I want to copy the ID by pressing on this square icon and then just close this window. And now I can also close the animation editor as well. But now how do we basically make this NPC play the animation that we just made? And it's pretty simple. One of the things that the character is going to need is a humanoid, which we already have right here, but it also needs an animator. And this animator instance, this is going to handle the loading and playing of the animation on our character. And also the animator needs to be parented under the humanoid or an animation controller. But let's just add a folder under the animator and this folder is going to be called character animations. And then I'm going to add an animation instance and under the properties, paste in the ID of the copied animation under the animation ID. And also change the name of the animation instance to be like idle. So we have everything set up and now let's get to scripting. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to add a script under the humanoid instance of this NPC. And then just name this one animate character. 
And now I'm just going to make references to everything from the character, like the humanoid animator and the idle animation. So the humanoid is just going to be script.parent, animator is going to be the humanoid.animator, and then the character animations is just going to be the animator.character animations. And now let's just make a function and call it setup. And I'm just going to call this function right at the end. And now on how to play the animation on the character. We first see basically just need to load it by doing animator and then load animation. And from this box right here, you can see that this method, it expects the animation, which is going to be the animation instance. So in our case, the idle animation. And then it returns something called an animation track. And that animation track is basically the animation being loaded onto the character from the animator. So I can just do local idle is equal to the animator, then load the animation, and I also need to get the reference to the idle animation instance that I just pass right here into this method. And now this idle, I can basically just do play, and this is basically already going to play the animation on our character. So if I just do a run test, you can see that our NPC is basically just playing our animation. But something like this is only useful if you have one animation that you want to play on the character. Because sometimes the character can be walking and playing a different animation. For example, this could be like a RPG NPC, which could be like a smith, a shopkeeper or whatever. And depending on the action, they could have other different animations. So what I like to do in this case is basically to just have a dictionary, which is going to hold all of the loaded animation tracks. So instead of doing local idle, I'm just going to do animation dictionary dot idle and then do the play method. So again, if I do another run test, the character is going to play our animation. But what if I wanted to play a different animation now? Well, first say I would need to make it. And I just made something stupid like the cat jumping and then slowly falling down. But this is basically just for a showcase. So again, the priority needs to be an idle. And then I need to publish this again. And again, just copy the ID, then duplicate the animation. And then this one I'm going to name idle2. And just paste it under the animation ID property again. And in this case, if it comes to doing more than just one animation, it's better to do a for loop to load the animation tracks onto the character, where you basically just want to loop through all of the children of the character animations folder. Then set the anim dictionary from animation.name equal to the animator and then load animation and the animation instance. So now all of the animations are going to be loaded onto the character. And then we basically just play it the same with using the play method. Just like so. And now to just play the other animation, I can for example just play one after another and just have them continuously loop. So now in the setup function, which basically just loads the animations for now, in this for loop I will need to do a few different things. Firstly, I will just need to connect a stopped function to the currently loaded animation track. But I would also need to disable the looping property to false. Then make a local function that I basically just connect to the stopped event that is going to determine which animation is going to play. And I'm just going to pass the animation that name as an argument to the play different idle function. So I can basically just have a ternary operator to determine which animation is going to play, which is going to check if the animation is going to be idle. And then if it's going to be idle, then it's going to play the idle animation. Otherwise, it's going to play the idle too. So I just need to do anim dictionary from animation to play and then use the play method. And my mistake, this was supposed to be idle 2 or idle, and not the other way around, because it just kept playing the same animation. But now if I do a run test, it's going to play the animation idle 1, and then it's going to do the jump. And now it's going to play the animation idle 1 again. So to just play these different animations, you would refer to the animation dictionary, and then to the animation name that you wanted to play. You can see that here I selected either the idle animation or the idle 2 animation. But just for a note, I wouldn't recommend doing it like this. This was just an example and this system isn't really too good. And lastly, I need to mention that there are different options in the play method, like the fade time, wait and the speed. Where the fade time, this is basically a time in seconds that it takes for the character's body parts or bones to go back to their original position from the last keyframe of the animation. 
then the weight is basically a value of how much movement influence the current animation is going to have over the other ones that are currently also playing. And this speed is just the speed of the animation. So if I did like 0.1 with one weight and then let's say 0.5 speed and then did the same right here, this would basically just make the animation two times longer. But yeah, that's basically how you play idle animations on an NPC character, and that's basically going to be everything for today. So yeah, go check out my UGC items and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.